Good evening, family. Sorry if I sound tired. I just got home from watching my grandson all day. And um, my daughter got him a trampoline. You see where I'm going with this, right? He calls me Bubble. Never thought when I had a grandchild I'd be called Bubble. What do you mean? He calls me Bubble. And he says, Bubble? Trampoline? I've been jumping on the trampoline all day, except for when it was nap time. <laughs> but I'm creating memories. I mean, I'm making memories, and I, I love I love spending time with my grandson. Now I get to go out and do round two and deliver till midnight. I actually have, actually, I gotta, while I'm making this video, let me pause my wrap. Nothing's coming in. So, I'm ready for my new glorified body. This one's feeling every bit of my 55 years old. This could be the year of the rapture. I mean, we, I'm not going to say for sure, but the signs are pointing to that. But whenever the rapture is, we will be ready. We'll be looking up. It's going to be soon. So whatever you're going through, hang in there. When you accept Jesus, Lord and Savior, <clears throat> your sins are washed clean, past, present, and future. When the Holy Spirit dwells in you, he guides you. He lifts you up. He encourages us. He's our best friend. He guides us. He strengthens us. Without Jesus, we're nothing. The sacrifice he made for us to wash our sins clean. <coughs> if you haven't accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, I implore you to do it today. There's no world leader. Trump, definitely Biden. <coughs> <clears throat> Not wherever you're listening. Nobody in any part of the world is going to fix this problem. This is a spiritual problem. The one that's going to temporarily fix it. Sorry, that's my noise, but <clears throat> it's the Antichrist. He's going to make calm out of chaos and everybody's going to marvel over him. It's really sad. And it's really sad, you know, hearing the news about the, you know, the red heifer. It's what they're going to do, that red heifer. That's so sad. I'm, I'm an animal lover. And, um, they don't need to do that. You know, it's so sad because there, there are Jewish people that do believe in Jesus, and that's awesome. But a lot don't, and they don't need to do that. The Savior has already come into the world. He sacrificed himself. I mean, if Jesus wasn't who he said he was, why would he go through all of that, you know? <clears throat> Jesus is the only way to heaven. There's no other Savior. Jesus is the only way to God the Father. Very soon... Maybe this year, maybe next year, in the blink of an eye, I'm going to be home. I just, um, been out, um, Chad Thomas, I think he goes by Watchman on the Wall. I, I can't be for sure on that name. That, um, he's leaving YouTube. My prayers go out to Chad and his family. This is from Prophecy News Watch. Red heifers, we know that they are ready for the temple by Passover. <clears throat> That's what this article is saying. And we know who's going to be sitting in that temple one day. This is huge. This is huge news. Game changing developments are happening right now in Israel concerning the third temple. Building the most critical missing link, preventing the rebuilding of the temple, is set to fall into place within months. <coughs> Excuse me, with crucial help from Christians. Isn't it something that all of this is falling into place? We got the, um, oh, I'm so, oh my gosh, all right, my mind just went blank, um, eclipse. We got the eclipse coming. Is it Nineveh, the city said it's going through? And now this, you see everything's falling into place. It's set to fall into place within months with crucial help from Christians. Meanwhile, Hamas is watching the developments closely and have even claimed it to be a major part of the motivation for the heinous October 7th terror attack. <coughs> Excuse me. I just had dairy, I'm sorry. With tensions already at boiling point across the Middle East, we will shortly see Israel 
take bold steps towards rebuilding this temple. <clears throat> Excuse me. Christian Rancher provides the missing link. The final missing piece of the third temple project, the infamous ashes of a red heifer, is now only months away from falling into place. These ashes are biblically mandated for purification in a range of situations, including contact with dead bodies. Numbers 19. <coughs> Without the red heifer ashes, <coughs> priests and Leviites currently in training with the Temple Institute are disqualified from serving in a future rebuilt temple. Furthermore, with all the bloodshed on the Temple Mount down through the centuries, the mound itself must be cleansed before the temple can be built. The problem is that finding an unblemished red heifer is extremely rare. In recent years, temple activists have had their efforts end in frustration time and time and time again. <clears throat> Potential red heifer candidates have been located with great excitement, only to end up later just um, developing white hairs or getting otherwise disqualified before they've reached the required age to be sacrificed. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. It was in this context that Byron Stinson, a Christian rancher from Texas, baffled rabbis in 2022 as he invited them to his ranch to inspect what turned out to be five unblemished red heifers. What happened next sounds almost like <clears throat> it was taken from a Hollywood movie. As the heifers were airlifted to Israel at around one year old, how do you even go about flying cows to the Holy Land? Being greeted at the airport with a special ceremony officiated by rabbis, the heifers were then taken out of the public eye to continue being quietly groomed for the sacrifice. <clears throat> <clears throat> Although one of the five were disqualified was disqualified last year due to the emergence of a few white hairs, the remaining four remain on track to be eligible to be sacrificed this year according to all Israeli news. Temple Institute rabbis hope to perform the ceremony prior to Passover this year, while other sources claim it will happen sometime between Passover and Pentecost. <coughs> Link in the cows and terror. While the story of the flight of the five heifers to Israel and their subsequent journey has certainly stirred great excitement among temple activists as well as Christian students of Bible prophecy, a curious... It curiously hardly got a mention in mainstream Israeli news. <clears throat> wow. It will surprise many Christians to discover that by and large, secular Israelis are uninterested and unaware of these developments. In addition, many Orthodox Jews are opposed to any current moves to rebuild the temple, as most hold it can be rebuilt by the Messiah in the Messianic era. <coughs> However, the radical Islamic world understands the, the significance of the arrival of the red heifers and are incensed by their presence. Sorry, I had to pause the video. I had to pause the video and call attack again. It was no coincidence that Hamas called it infamous and deadly October 7th terror attack, Operation Al-Aqsa Flood. <coughs> Speaking at the 100-day mark of the current war with Israel, Abu, whatever that last name is, Ob I don't know, your guess is as good as mine. We'll just call him Abu. <coughs> A military spokesman for Hamas said that the aggression against our path and Al-Aqsa reached its peak with the bringing of the red cows. Hamas' passionate call for the liberation of Al-Aqsa Mosque from the Israeli threat. Take some water. Can't wait till these allergy, this allergy medicine starts working. Allergy abjays I'm taking. <coughs> Highlighting the broad level of Islamic concern for the site. The Organization of Islamic Cooperation was founded in 1969 with the specific goal of protecting the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Today, the, the influential organization <coughs> excuse me, boasts 56 member states and it's the second largest intergovernmental organization in the world after the UN. 
won't there be a third temple? Israeli government officials of all persuasions are highly aware of Islamic sensitivities concerning the Temple Mount and have, through the years, repeatedly committed themselves to maintaining the status quo on the Temple Mount for this very reason. <coughs> While the ashes of the red heifer may become available in the next few months, the temple rebuilding project still seems unrealistic in the current environment. The fears of the Israeli government leaders of sparking all-out war combined with the lack of interest and even outright opposition from many Israelis to the project make it seem completely impossible. However, the events of October 7th show how quickly long-held views can change. Prior to the heinous terror attack, <coughs> excuse me, the majority of Israelis were seeking to get on with their lives in some kind of peaceful coexistence with Hamas, being contained by Israel's state-of-the-art border fence. The dismiss the dis the small failure of the high-tech fence to stop the October 7th attack has smashed this long-held Israeli view, changing the perspective of the nation overnight into a determined decision to eradicate Hamas from its borders. Sim similarly, I believe that the long-held Israeli reservations towards the Third Temple will one day change. <clears throat> what does the Bible say? Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Zechariah 4, verse 6. Sorry, that was my grab. Rebuilding the temple seemed completely impossible by the impoverished Jews returning from Babylon. Captivity in the days of, where's that city again? Um, Nehemiah? I might have said that wrong, I'm sorry. Into the context of mounting opposition from surrounding nations and countless delays, Zechariah the prophet spoke the above words of encouragement, proclaiming that God himself would make a way by his spirit. Through the prophecies of Zechariah, <coughs> God's spirit indeed strengthened the hands of the builders, paved the way politically, and enabled the miraculous construction of the second temple, which stood when Jesus came to earth. Couldn't God do the same again in our day? I believe that both Old and New Testament Bible prophecy is clear that the temple will be rebuilt in the end times. In his famous Olivet Discourse, Jesus predicted, When you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, then let those who are in my mom's coffin too. I apologize. That's her in the background. <coughs> We're coffers over here. Standing in the holy place. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. For then there will be great tribulation. Matthew 24, verse 15 through 21. While some Bible prophecy teachers interpret these words of Jesus in symbolic sense, Jesus' Jewish listeners would have understood his words quite literally. <clears throat> they would have seen, excuse me, his words as referring back to an almost identical event that occurred around 170 B.C., where a literal idol was erected in the temple, leading to the widespread persecution. Jesus' prophecy was therefore seen as predicting a literal repeat of these events to occur in a real physical temple in Jerusalem in the end days. Being ready. <coughs> Excuse me. The Temple Institute speak of the shame they would feel if they were given the go-ahead to build the temple tomorrow and were caught completely unprepared. They have therefore spent many years preparation and training for that day to come and the ashes of the red heifer will mark the crowning achievement of this preparation while many israelis are unaware of these developments so too is much of the church it's true just as he promised jesus is soon returning to this earth to rule and these developments point us to the nearness of his return praise the lord i'm ready we're ready aren't we i'm just I'm, we're all so ready to go <coughs> i want to see jesus i'm just i'm, I'm so ready Following the example of the Temple Institute, we too should be preparing ourselves for the soon fulfillment of prophecy, doing everything in our power to be ready for that great day, because remember, it's going to be in the blink of an eye. Let us also remember to pray not only for the fulfillment of Bible prophecy and the coming of the Messianic Kingdom, but also for the internal distance of Jews and Arabs caught up in the current and future waves of conflict. Days of great tension lie ahead, but God's purpose in the midst of these shakings is to bring many people into his kingdom. Amen. May we all play our part in this significant time in history. God could have chose us to be born in any generation throughout history. It is a blessing to be in the generation that will see the return of Jesus. Remember, God sees your heart. We live for Christ. We have repented. 
We are rapture ready. Could happen any time. And I cannot wait to meet you guys. You guys mean so much to me. I love you guys. I pray for all of you every day. And your families and your pets and your finances, your business, your health. Any family members you may have lost, I, I pray. I, 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 every night I pray. And I'm looking forward to meeting you guys. It's going to be soon. Guys, these are exciting times. All these world events don't scare us. Because we know we're going home soon. In the blink of an eye, we are about to see Jesus face to face. All of these problems are about to be over. No more health issues. No more menopause. No more financial trouble. Or, if you're like me, all the above button. <coughs> so, hang in there. Remember brownie table? Brownies in heaven? Oh my gosh, could you imagine? Wow. Come see me at my mansion, and I'll come see you at your mansion. Keep looking up. Could be any time now. Hang in there. We have so much to look forward to. I'm going to put Bong back on my Uber app. Um, the longer it takes me to get an order, the longer later I have to be out. And it's been a long day, let me tell you. <laughs> 55 years old, and this 55-year-old grandma was jumping on a trampoline all day. <laughs> but it was fun. God bless you guys, and I will talk to you soon.